Mr. Harris, Ms. Hanson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Ranking Member Cuellar, as well, um, for holding this hearing today. Um, Director Easterly, it's great to see you again. Um, thank you so much for uh, meeting with me and answering some of my questions before uh, the hearing today about um, what you're doing to help reduce cyber threats, also ensure that our uh, critical cyber um, installations and infrastructure are resilient. So I appreciate that. Um, I know CISA is obviously working to um, secure cyber security and infrastructure, but also to analyze and create tools um, to help build up that security across various sectors in the, in the country. Um, you mentioned collaborative analysis there. Um, and while that work is, of course, uh, essential to protecting our, our um, national security now. What I am most concerned about is the agency's long-term um, stability and consistency toward that mission and that goal if it's pulled in too many different directions um, with, um, with a focus on maintaining that unified mission. That's really what I want to see you do going forward. So what do you see as CIS's primary function um, and dri driving focus? Um, and what steps are you taking to rein in to make sure you're focused on that mission? Yeah, thank you very much. It was great to meet with you, and I appreciate your leadership. We went through an exercise to ensure that we could create uh, a strategic plan that lays out our goals in a unified way. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do was not to do a whole bunch of different things, just as you said. We wanted to focus on four key things. One, on cyber defense. Two, on infrastructure risk and resilience. Three, on operational collaboration. And four, on unification. All of that is spelled out in our strategic plan along with our mission, which is to lead the national effort to understand, manage, and reduce risk to the cyber and physical infrastructure that Americans rely on every hour of every day with the vision of secure and resilient infrastructure for the American people. Every single person in my agency is focused on that very specific mission and everybody sees themselves in that mission. So focus, 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 continue to invest in those capabilities that will most effectively drive down risk to the nation. All right. And I look forward to working with our ranking member on um, his initiatives to um, hopefully get some ROI and some some firm yes, um, um, requirements there and some teeth on, on what we're getting for our dollars. Um, with the ongoing cyber threats, uh, of course, from um, foreign adversaries, you call them foreign influence operations, um, like the CCP, which is blatantly targeting Americans' data. Um, obviously, you mentioned TikTok as well as a huge threat. Um, these are truly attacks on our critical physical infrastructure and, uh, and on our nation's security. So um, it's more uh, essential than ever that our cyber platforms are secure. Um, I think we need to be uh, forward thinking and planning for that next threat. These attacks are happening every single day in mass, and we need to be confident we have guardrails in place to detect. Um, so again, getting back to what you mentioned about collaborative analysis here, um, without going into too much detail um, timing wise, what preventative methods is CISA utilizing to counter that increased aggression from uh, foreign adversaries like the CCP um, and Russia? As you mentioned, solar winds, we know they're not giving up. Um, so can you just briefly uh, dive into that for me? Yeah, and we've made significant investments even just the past two years, given the lessons learned uh, out of solar winds. The thing that I would highlight, because I think to get to that sustainable cybersecurity, we really do need a posture of persistent operational collaboration, a recognition that the government Government can't do it alone. Industry can't do it alone. So that's why the Congress gave us these authorities to build the Joint Cyber Defense Collaborative. And we've been working with our partners since August of 2021 to operationalize that. We did it uh, to help drive down risk around a very serious software vulnerability called Log4j. We did it around uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, working with our industry partners to come up with a four-phase plan where we could actually measurably do things if the Russians actually retaliated against our infrastructure. We were bringing in data, we were analyzing it, we were enriching it, and we were creating a picture that allowed us much more ability to actually drive down risk to the nation. So, And we've been expanding it. If you, if you happen to see, if not, I'll get it to you, our, our JCDC planning agenda, where there's a focus on working with energy companies, mm -hmm. uh, a focus on further collaboration on things like uh, high-risk communities, um, further collaboration with cross-sector entities. So all kinds of things to continue to drive down risk, but collaboration and collective defense is the key to that. Uh, you mentioned it was, I think, 560 new people is what I wrote down. Um, how many of those people would you say are devoted to these types of priorities? Um, so f 516, 16. Uh, okay. actually. Um, and 
We have uh, in our, so in those priorities, frankly, I mean, I would say collaboration is one of our core values at CISA. So I'd like to say everyone in collaboration because as you know, we don't do law enforcement. We don't do intel. We don't do military. We're not a traditional regulator. We're a partnership agency. So I think everybody would say they are, they are part of these collaboration efforts, specifically on the cyber side. Um, that falls within our cyber team, which is about 1,000 people. Okay, great. Thank you, Director. Thank and you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Henson. Uh, 